Hey YouTube, Homestead Prepper, and um, I just want to talk a little bit about generators, and um, I, I just want to show you how easy it is to start this one up. Um, I discussed with my wife on how to do this, and I'm just going to make a little tutorial, and maybe it'll help someone. So it's uh, it's pretty simple. The first thing you do is you want to put this switch over here to one, and uh, you want to put the choke on. Um, this had a real crappy fuel shutoff from the factory. I have replaced it and I put this brass one on here. And you line it that way. And that lets the fuel go in there. Of course you want to make sure there's fuel in it, which I've already done that. And uh, if it's cold, you put it on choke. Now this one has been running. I've already checked it out. I'm going to put this back and run and it should start right back up. And uh, what you want to do on this particular generator is you want to let it run for five minutes before you hook any uh, power tools or hook anything up, put a load on it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about generators. I get questions all the time from people. Uh, the biggest question I get is, well, what size generator do I need? And, uh, you know, my question to you is, what, uh, what, what level of convenience do you want in your home in a grid down situation? Uh, a lot of people I talk to, uh, they, they want to uh, the generator to run the home just like it's hooked to the power company. And uh, I said, well, yeah, yeah, you can do that. You get a you know 25 um, kW, 30 kW, 50 kW generator. Um, yeah, it'll run your whole home and you can run all your appliances, everything. Turn everything on in your central AC system. And, uh, you know, when they find out the price of one of those generators and what it costs to hook it up, then uh, they, they usually have a change of heart. Most people do. So, you know, it's just something you have to ask yourself. A lot of people I run into, they, they want a generator just big enough to run their central air conditioner because they want to be cool. They want their comforts in a uh, grid down uh, scenario. So, you know, if that, that's a priority priority to you. Um, usually on a smaller central AC system you have to have like a 12 kW generator. Uh, if it's a little bit larger system you might want to get a 15 kW generator. And I've had people argue with me and say well my air conditioner doesn't pull that kind of uh, load while it's running. And um, uh, I say you're right but on, on uh, air conditioners when they start up they start up at six times the load and you have to have something to compensate with that and that requires a larger generator so uh, you know ask yourself what you want to run and uh, what what size you need now uh, I went with a 5500 watt generator that you see here for several reasons and uh, one reason was it was really all I could afford at the time and this is about 10 years old uh, but my biggest priority was uh, that well right there. I wanted to be able to get some water because when the power goes out I don't have any water unless I get my hand pump out. So uh, being able to run that uh, uh, generator and run that well uh, was a big big huge huge convenience. So to me that's a priority and I want to be able to uh, run my freezer and refrigerator and if I can run a few lights in my house and uh, you know maybe the computer or TV uh, that's that's bonus but uh, water freezer refrigerator uh, also uh, I want to be able to run some power tools too uh, if if necessary so I want a generator bigger than that Now I've heard people say well all I need is a uh, a 3,000 watt generator. Well, hey, if that meets your needs and everything, that's great. Now, uh, the problem people get into is they'll buy a really cheap generator and uh, it'll only be able to run, you know, 10 or 12 hours a day max. And if you run it over that, it will, uh, it will, you will have, you will experience engine failure. And uh, I've hooked up transfer switches for people before and they went out and bought a cheap generator and I won't name the brand of it. And uh, they've tried to run it continuous for a whole week and it burns up and it goes bad because it's not rated. Uh, this generator is uh, rated to run continuous duty. Uh, the only downside of this thing is you have to change the oil out every 24 hours of runtime. Uh, I'm in the process of trying to run a filter system through here so I don't have to change the oil so often. And uh, this generator is rated to run 
ten and a half hours on seven gallons of fuel at half load. Now, uh, I was able to run this thing for twenty hours on five gallons of fuel because I wasn't running it at the limit. I was just running a few basic things, and uh, you, you know, your well, your well is not going to run consistently. You know, it, I mean, unless you, you know, you're going to start turning it on. Um, uh, another thing I did in our last, uh, when we were out power, is I ran water hoses over to the neighbors' homes. And uh, actually, I, I ran a water hose over, several water hoses over to my uh, closest neighbor. And uh, he was able to have water. And he had already run uh, some PVC line, two inch PVC line underground, all the way over to the other neighbor's house. So uh, we were able to, to give water to several families. So. Uh, that's just a couple things I want to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, hooking it up and uh, I, I can't stress enough to you that uh, uh, in a grid down situation the jack leg electricians are going to pop up and uh, people are going to die and people are going to get uh, electrocuted and uh, you know all the time you hear about people running generators and families getting carbon monoxide poisoning from running them in uh, enclosed spaces so you know I, I have to mention that. So uh, if you're going to, the easiest way I can tell you to hook up a generator if you don't know how to hook one into your house is go out and buy some extension cords. You know, th this is a cheap 16 gauge extension cord. You can plug right into that and run this over to your refrigerator or your freezer and it's going to work. And I know some people say, oh, well, it's 16 gauge. That ain't going to work. Well, trust me, it will work. Uh, I've got a 20 gauge cord right there excuse me, not 20 gauge, 12 gauge oh, cord, which is rated for 20 amps, and I've got some other 12 gauge cords here that are rated for uh, 20 amps, and uh, this, this right here is a twist lock receptacle, and if you look, it has a NEMA number on it, and it says it's, um, the, the NEMA number is L14-30, so that's a 30 amp plug, and uh, if you want a matching uh, plug, mail-in plug for that, then you get an L1430 mail. And that, that's how you figure out how to plug into that thing. And what I would do is hook up one of those cords right there, and uh, I'll show you what I would do. I can't stress enough to always, always get a transfer switch. Now, I happen to get this one for free, and I refurbished it. But, uh, you know, uh, like, like I was saying, a lot of people are just really cheap and uh, they throw caution to the wind. And if you uh, back feed this panel here and it goes up on the line and you kill a lineman from running power through here illegally, uh, then, you know, that's on you. So I always recommend you get a licensed electrical engineer, licensed master electrician. Uh, have the thing permitted and have it inspected by code enforcement so it's done right and you don't kill anybody you don't burn your house down and uh, what, what you're gonna see is uh, I, I've seen uh, you, you know being in the trade I have seen all kinds of stuff and uh, if we were to have an emergency I guarantee you this is what you're gonna see you're gonna see somebody come over and say oh yeah I can hook up to that panel and and they'll get their jumper cables out and they, they'll want to hook right onto it so uh, guys, don't, don't do anything like that. It's not worth it. And uh, I, I can speak from authority, from, um, well, not, not from doing stuff half ass but from uh, being cocky when I was younger, doing electrical. And uh, it would be nothing for me to pull wires out while they were live and sparking and hook them up. And uh, everything was great until one day where I um, was fooling around with some uh, 277, 480, and I, I'll just say I made a good connection and um, you know all my might I could not break free of that and uh, I guess well technically I died and uh, I uh, it was in a doctor's office <laughs> thank goodness but uh, I um, after that I, I never was cocky again with uh, electrical so always turn the stuff off uh, better yet just hire a pro someone who knows what they're doing and if you see someone pull out here with jumper cables trying to hook up your generator, man, just tell them to go away. Uh, always be safe. So, uh, I hope to do a future video about hooking this thing up. I need to get a, um, a trough in here. I need to cut this and uh, hook this up and do this properly and put a, uh, a plug on here and uh, make it really simple and idiot-proof it. So, 
uh, that's all I want to say, and uh, this is the Homestead Prepper out. I uh, forgot to mention that anytime I get done with uh, my generator, I take this little valve where it was on and I turn it off while it's running, and I just let it uh, run out on its own. And what that does is that runs runs all the fuel out of the carburetor. It was still left on, and uh, that way it has no chance to gum up. And uh, that way, the next time I want to use my generator, I come out here and it'll start right up and I don't have any problems. I don't have to uh, clean the carburetor, take it apart, and all that business. Um, I, if, if I'm going to do long-term storage, I'll drain the uh, fuel out of this tank right here, too. And any time I fool around with a generator, I always use a good quality uh, stabilizer. I recommend that. But uh, I just want to share that with you guys. And um, th this generator was in storage for over a year, and uh, it started up first pull. So uh, you take care of your generator, and it'll take care of you. Homestead Prepper out.